North America's very first hydrogen fuel cell semi truck is officially in production by Nikola Motors. But that might not just be the biggest news you've heard about this company this past week. And as for why exactly that would be the case, folks, well, not only is Nikola's CEO departing, but the company is actually witnessing a surge in demand for their fuel cell truck over their battery electric one, even though the former has been in production for well over 18 months now. Nikola has obviously struggled to gain traction in this market, primarily driven by a post-pandemic bust in the logistics space here in North America, where people and drivers are having a tough time finding the right loads, and as shipping rates have collapsed, profit margins for these businesses are going down. However, as we all know, folks, the industry will and is indeed right now shifting towards a greener future. Companies that have the right cash positions have the ability to demo and invest in Nikola's products as well as their competitors who have real offerings on the market. And that is exactly what Nikola is betting on right now. Because let's be honest, folks, the tale around Nikola Motors as a company for the past two years has always been around its stock and its inability to deliver a real product. Well, over the past 12 months, that sentiment has shifted and it seems to be finally getting reflected in the stock price as it's up almost 500% over the past four months. As for whether or not that move is justified or if Nikola has the right amount of liquidity to sustain operations over the next 12 months or whether their fuel cell trucking business makes any sense is exactly what I want to update you guys in today's video. So to start things off, folks, let's address Nikola Motors and their electric trucking business from an investing standpoint, because as I'm sure that is the most important metric to look at when it comes to understanding how quickly they can ramp up production and deliver these EVs onto the market. And as you can see, folks, the earnings were mostly just a mixed bag when reported on Friday morning. The stock plummeted by over a quarter percent, primarily because the company had a massive run up over the past two weeks. And as we know in the market, most rallies tend to be buy the hype and sell the news. So it's really no surprise that we saw this kind of volatility play out today. However, more importantly, what we did see is the appointment of a new CEO, somebody who tends to be a little bit more familiar with Nikola's past by the name of Steve. Gursky replacing Michael Loskeller. Now this folks right here is certainly much more of a surprise because Michael brought a lot of things to Nikola's executive management team with the success running Volkswagen and Opel over the past decade. However, he has stepped down due to family health reasons, which obviously he cannot attend to while most of his family is living in Europe and he's living in Arizona which makes it quite understandable for why this was such a shock move. However, with the incoming CEO by the name of Steve Gursky, we have now somebody who has management experience running previous automotive companies, particularly by the name of GM and even Polestar. CEO transitions aren't necessarily the end of the road for most businesses, but they tend to be a foreshadow of what is next to come. And as you can see over the past 12 months that Michael has been head of the game, he has made a pretty significant improvement in Nikola's business strategy, with their estimated loss per share in the second quarter coming in lower than what analysts had expected, even though their revenue fell year over year by almost 20%. For those that might not have been keeping up, over the past year, Nikola has made some strategic moves to reduce cash expenditure and make sure that they don't run out of inventory and flood the market with EVs that might just not be ready for customers. Obviously, they started production and it's important for them to build scale to reduce cost, but that has to come at a balance to understanding the market. And as we've seen, the trucking market right now is generally running quite slow. And unlike the consumer EV business, it grows at a slower pace and there is a much longer lead time to acquiring vehicles. And as I'm sure many are familiar, the dealership model is number one when it comes to trucking and most customers simply will not purchase a vehicle if it's not through a registered dealer. 
And that means that not only Nikola's profit margins will suffer comparatively to the likes of someone like Rivian or Tesla who sell direct to consumer, but they will also most likely have a longer lead time and potentially take a bigger hit on inventories if they do pile up. Because if they were to sell direct to customer, they could do a build to order strategy without having to communicate to a middleman who would not only mark up the vehicle, reducing demand of the vehicle at the end, but it would also hurt Nikola's own profits. And this analogy right here, folks, also tends to perfectly explain why Nikola has been selling more on retail versus wholesale, which has reduced their revenue to 15 million in this year's second quarter. Even though big logistics companies like Talon, JB Hunt, Anheuser-Busch, and even Alta are working closely with Nikola, testing their vehicles and getting them out on the road, Nikola is not realizing as much revenue because dealers see a slowdown in the market and they want to prepare ahead of time, even if retail sales are picking up. And you can see those events play out quite clearly with what's happened with the yellow trucking, which does over $5 billion in annual sales, but is now on the brink of filing for bankruptcy. This is a pretty big deal because this is going to be the very first time in over a couple of years that a big logistics automaker in the U.S. is going under. Yellow at one point was one of the biggest logistics companies in North America, but now their market cap is worth less than $150 million, and their inability to really turn a profit paired with the slowdown and shortening lead times has ultimately led to their demise. This kind of industry headwind is 100% the reason why Nikola only sold 45 trucks to dealers, but ended up selling 66 of them from dealers to end users. That translates to around $15 million in quarterly revenue, but also translates into the company's best ever retail sales numbers, which could be a leading sign of why the overall trucking industry could be recovering. Because remember folks, the latest PMI and CPI data has shown us that the labor market is turning over to the downside. And although from an economic standpoint that doesn't sound too good, it is great news for trucking industries, especially those in the L2L and back to base spaces, because it means that the cost of labor is going to come down and the shortage of drivers that many fleets have experiencing is also going to start to fade away. And as I'm sure you already know, folks, no kind of short term economic headwind really acts as reason to not invest in a certain type of technology. And we're already seeing a lot of momentum for the hydrogen side of things with somebody like Ford partnering up with Ballard Power Systems to refit their existing trucks. This brings new competition into a market that already has a lot of automakers vowing to compete over the next five years, with Nikola right now really just being one of the very first to start production here in North America. Whether it be the M1 concourse event that brought in dozens of fleets to test out Nikola's trucks, or the government of California handing out grants to the company, to help fund its hydrogen stations in the country. It's pretty clear that there's a lot of industry experts and organizations coming together to make sure that this can be a successful venture. And it's pretty clear to me that Nikola is still fighting through that, although with some short-term headwinds, not only from the economy, but also the company's own management. From a financial standpoint, their gross profit did widen a little bit to less than 180% with a margin that was sitting right around the same as it did this time last year. That isn't necessarily a bad thing and certainly means there's a lot of room for improvement, but it is also certainly something that can be expected in a time that is as turbulent for the trucking space as it is right now. Nikola's balance sheet is certainly going to be one to watch with their cash and cash equivalents, although increasing on a quarter over quarter basis to almost $300 million is still nowhere near to really pay off all the debts that they owe right now, which amount to more than $600 million. Their current liabilities are still lower than their current assets, which is obviously a good sign, but it certainly is the case that they're going to have to raise money over the next 12 months, which certainly could come in the form of shareholder dilution or particularly even from direct offerings to institutional investors. Overall, all these points really come together to create a mixed earnings report for Nikola, which although strong in some areas was poorer in others, which overall dictates how their electric trucking ramp up could really go. I don't necessarily think they're going to hit their 10,000 target for 2024, 
given the headwinds we're seeing right now. But obviously, we have, but obviously, Wall Street can have certain different expectations from a business that has such a huge market opportunity laying out in front of it. Over 200 verified purchase orders now exist for Nikola's fuel cell truck, which are expected to be fulfilled at the end of September with their very first hydrogen station rolling out and getting commissioned in December. Whether or not those timelines hold, only time will tell. But as usual, folks, let me know your thoughts on the situation down in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.